Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome back to Australia. I promise this is Australia, despite the weather being a little bit more like Scotland, or maybe even Finland. It's cold and it's wet. Somebody out there is trolling us, but I don't really care because today is gonna to be a very special day. Ironically, I'm on the Sunshine Coast, just no sunshine, at Bowden's Own, which is kind of Australia's leading car care company, really. I'll take you inside in a second to show you some of their awesome products. But as you can see behind me, I'm here to check out a couple of cars. Two of the best Porsche 911s ever made. Whilst they're not the newest within the Porsche circles, the RS 4 litre and the original 2.7 RS are regarded as potentially some of the best. And yes, today, I'm gonna to be getting behind the wheel of both. Now, as you probably saw a moment ago, it's not just Porsches that are knocking around down here at Bowden's Own. There's an incredible collection of cars. A lot of kind of, well, Aussie muscle cars, or Bathurst cars, so Targa Tasmania, Ford Mustang, loads that we can get into, but let me quickly show you, obviously, just the products, because not only are these some of the best car care products, well, in Australia, but I could say potentially the world, but these guys know how to have some fun. So look at this. I give snow jobs. This is their, well, crotch cannon for snow foaming. Um, so many things, so many of their products just have a bit of fun. So they don't take themselves too seriously, but they do create some awesome car care products. We're gonna need a few of these, I think, today, just to wipe down the surfaces so we can put some uh, GoPros on the various cars. I mean, I don't even know what's going on here, but it's all just amazing. Look at this bugger off to kind of get rid of bug splatter and things like that. It's all just very clever and very fun. But yes, not only are they making awesome products, they are car people. But we're gonna move past this because yes, I am so excited for today to check out these two incredible 911s. <laughs> Well, as you can see, I'm starting the day with the origin story, the 1973 2.7 RS. This is where it all began for the RS moniker, but also potentially for really special 911s. Look, don't get me wrong, I'm a big Porsche fan these days, so I could argue that really all Porsches are special, but there are some that just sit a level above the others, and these days, it's probably the GT products. I think back in the 70s, it was the race inspired or homologated versions. And this is exactly what this car is, a homologated race car. I have actually driven one of these before. Unbelievably, it's one of the first Porsches I ever drove. I made a video in Monaco where I drove one of these and a 991.1 generation GT3 back to back. I think I titled the video something like, I've always hated Porsches or whatever. And I drove these two cars and went, oh no, they're quite good. Yeah, they're, they're quite good. And that kind of kick-started this obsession that I now have. Now, obviously, 1970s 911s, very different from the modern day product, just like with Ferraris or Lamborghinis, things like that. The newest cars, well, they're just super easy to live with. Everything is where you expect it to be. They're comfortable, they're practical. These cars do have that, but they do have some things which were, well, maybe not completely thought through. For example, this massive steering wheel. I can't really fit my legs underneath it, which makes heel and towing in this car pretty difficult because I can't get my, my leg or my knee or my ankle far enough over it. It's just a bit awkward, but fundamentally, this thing is definitely still a Porsche, definitely still a 911, and just lovely. I've jumped into it in these horrific weather conditions, which are about to get worse, by the way. We're heading into a storm. It's not what we expected when we came to the Sunshine Coast. And I just I feel like I know what I'm doing. The car's so small and lovely. The view out the front is amazing. Ah, I'm having an absolute blast, people. And potentially, things are only going to get better when we then get into the 997 4 litre. Ah, oh, I love my life sometimes. Actually, I love my life all the time. What am I on about? got to love Australia, or at least this part of Australia. You can be in the middle of nowhere, pull over at a cafe, get an oat milk flat white. You can be in Birmingham in the UK and ask for oat milk and they're like, what? Yeah. What are you asking about? So, uh, that road right there. Pull yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, anyway, we decided to stop for a moment because, well, the rain got pretty silly. It is supposed to blow through, but it feels fairly set in. Uh, but there's some good driving roads ahead, and we just wanted to take a bit of a breather. You know, it's super interesting seeing these cars parked up together because they are obviously separated so far by age, but they are so similar. They're both RSs, and if you look at it, you can kind of just see 
so many of the similarities the ideology has carried through and whilst I was just saying to drive they're very different I think once we drive them back to back I go yeah just like with all Porsche products it's just an evolution they've kept that brilliant fundamental concept and just improved it a little bit year on year on year till they ended up with something as theoretically special as the four litre but anyway I'm gonna enjoy my coffee for a moment fingers crossed this rain will pass through and then we can get back out on the road maybe start to push on in the 2.7 a little bit more to see uh, see what it's all about now we have to applaud Bowden Zone for letting me drive these two cars on a day like today. These are two of the most sought after and collectible 911s ever made and we're out here in the rain, in the muck and in the grime. It may help that they make every single car care product known to man, so these cars will be, well, back to looking shiny and new before we know it, but it doesn't matter. I'm massively grateful for this opportunity. Now, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Actually, it's not that much of a secret because I've talked about it before on the podcast, but I often say I'm a big fan of old Ferraris and new Porsches. Whenever I've driven a, a Porsche product pre-2000, I don't know, I just haven't loved it as much as I've loved, well, the newer stuff. I've always appreciated it, but not necessarily bonded with it. I'm a big fan of Spike's car radio and often listen to the awesome Spike Ferriston and of course Jerry Seinfeld talk about how this 2.7 RS is probably the best Porsche ever made and what well, guys <laughs> you got it right I cannot explain why this thing is so much more special than any other 911 I've driven from this period it all just comes together obviously created as a homologation race car as far as I can understand it, Porsche were trying to well, move their race car program forward for the 911, so they bored out the engine and improved the suspension and of course added the uh, now iconic ducktail spoiler which evolved into the big old wing that we see on the, the 4 litre in front of me. But yeah, it's just, I mean, it's a lovely road car. It's so easy to vision the size, the size is so nice. It all just comes together to make it feel like you're really involved in throwing this thing down the road. Uh, Dan from Bowden's kind of summed it up best. He said, well, this is a car that you have to drive and if you're not gonna really drive it, there's no point. You're not gonna get the most out of it. You wanna rev it, you wanna be late on the brakes. You know, none of these elements feel particularly modern. I mean, this is a 1973 car. The brakes are a bit shoddy, the steering is super heavy. There's a lot of flex and roll and movement, but it's all predictable and glorious and it feels so well engineered. I mean, as I say, look at this weather, it's atrocious. I've never really driven this car before. I know it gets used a lot and we've got it. It's been turnkey and I'm out here having an absolute blast. I think potentially on a day like this, having so much more fun than I would do in the four litre because surely I'm just going to be holding back so much in that car. Well, this thing, despite the grease and the grime, it's a joy. So yeah, it's turned it all around for me. Forget the 356, which I adored earlier in the year. This has quickly become right at the top of my list when it comes to classics. Oh, what a joy. I've now swapped into the 997 generation GT3 RS 4.0. <laughs> this is a noisy and rattly car. Uh, obviously modern day GT3 RSs, even GT3s like mine, also have 4 litre engines, so why does this one have 4.0 in the name? It's because it's quite a special 4 litre engine. It's the last time Porsche fitted a Metzger engine to one of their cars. Uh, essentially up until the 991 generation, which replaced this car, all 911s had some form of Metzger engine in, including the 2.7 RS in front of me. So this car was like a like a send-off, a big sort of celebration of the iconic engine. It was bored out from 3.8 litres in the standard GT3 RS to 4 litres, and they had a load of special componentry to make this thing probably as close as a 911 had been to an RSR race car for a long time, and really as close as they would get until the latest 992 generation GT3 RS. This thing is highly struck as i say it's noisy it's rattly it's quite intense got the rear end from that era's gt2 rs 
big old rear wing, front dive planes, lightweight glass, lightweight body panels. I mean, so much going on to make this thing, well, really a track toy. Yes, it's a road car. Yes, it's a race car with number plates, but it's not the right day to be driving it because you want to be able to attack the corners, dive in late on the brakes. This car, she has the standard steel brakes, but you could have optional carbon ceramics at the time. But yeah, there's a lot going on. The fly, I mean, the, this thing revs up so quickly. And my favorite sort of feature is, well, how different the gear lever feels compared to the 2.7 RS. In that, when you want to change gear, it's like rowing a boat. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's everywhere. In this, the movement is so small and sharp and notchy, you're just gonna bash through those gears. Obviously, this is the last 911 RS they made with a manual gearbox. Okay, you could argue the 911R is that, but let's just focus on the RS name for a moment. So, for my mind, it's the most engaging RS product out there. Of course, the newer cars are quicker and faster, and Tony will say that, you know, PDK suits an RS way more, but I like the idea of this. Having said that, I've actually found it a little bit tricky to get used to initially. I jumped in the 2.7 RS up and running straight away. This thing, you need to kind of, well, treat properly. It's a lot to consider, and I think once you get up and going, there would be a lot going on. I'm a little bit pissed off because I have actually driven one of these before, for about five or 10 miles in the UK at 30 or 40 miles an hour. And here I am again today, getting behind the wheel of one, but in just miserable weather. It's getting worse by the second, which means I'm not really gonna figure out what this thing's all about. Obviously a huge part of it is the engine, so I can, Rev it out, it goes all the way up to eight and a half thousand RPM, but it's going to be the front end of this thing, it's going to be how it goes around the corner that really makes it special. Because, okay, fine, they made very few numbers of them, but it is heralded as being a great driver's car, not just rare. I'm not really going to get a sense of that. However, I have something called the 100 meter test, which essentially is, well, in the first 100 meters of any drive, I always know whether I'm going to like a car or not. I can't tell you whether it's going to be good, but I can tell you whether I'm going to like it. And straight away when I got in this thing, I went, oh yeah. However, on a day like this, I'd probably rather swap back into the 2.7. My head's all over the place. But I'm not going to knock it. It's a pretty cool opportunity to drive. Yeah, the 4.0, that Metzger engine. getting a glimpse people <laughs> I'm getting a glimpse of what this might all be about it's still super greasy super damp and I'm having to be very careful but as you maybe just saw it's lively this thing the front end oh my god you just want to load it up and it just digs in even more you can place it like you can a 992 but it just somehow feels a little bit more it's the RS having a manual like this. Oh! I'm, still, I'm just scratching the surface, but we had a couple of little moments and I was like, ah, aha. Uh -huh. A little bit like that manual 458 Speciale I drove. I feel like you have to be on, on top of your game. A bit like with the 2.7 RS, to max it out. That car's all about flow. This is about maximum cornering speed. But 
you've got to think about what you're doing. The car, you know, you haven't got the all the aids that you do on a modern car. You've got to be doing heel and toe. You've got to make sure the, the gearing is right. You've got to place the car correctly. The turning is so good that well, the car can move around if you sort of not paying attention or you haven't set it up correctly. Oh, it's exciting! <laughs> finally, finally, I'm getting a bit of an idea as to what this thing might be about. I quite like it. Well, welcome to the quite awesome looking Rick's Garage in Palm Woods. This is our sort of final stop of the day, but also our lunch stop. Also happens to be that when we get here, the rain stops, so. <laughs> but no, as I was just saying, I was starting to figure out the 3RS 4 litre, so I do feel like I still got a chance to kind of press on it a little bit. Uh, as you can see behind me, we've been joined by a Brewster Green 718 GT4, but also a 911 R. I find that kind of fascinating because probably the 3RS 4 litre and the 911 R are quite quite similar to the 991 generation 911. They never did a manual GT3 RS, but they did do the 911R, which is essentially a manual GT3 RS, it's without the wing and stuff like that. So yeah, on the roads we drove today, they'd probably be quite similar, but I guess the 911R would be better because it's a more modern car, who knows? Um, but yeah, all in all, it's been an amazing morning. If I'm really honest, if I was to drive away in any of these cars behind me, it might actually be the 2.7 RS. Well, you know, after a busy morning filming cars, you get peckish, so I just thought I'd have a light bite before we leave. <laughs> this is the big one. <laughs> Rick's garage. I mean, what even is going... Does anyone eat this? Probably, well, maybe some people do, who knows. Now, what I was thinking about the 2.7 RS, the reason why it's the car I would drive away, is I think it was just... It was such a thing in its era. If you think back to then, Ferrari were making the Daytona. What a barge. Lamborghini were kind of approaching the Countach. Well, a piece of crap, let's face it. They were special in their own right, but not that dynamic. Well, the 2.7 RS is just a fantastic thing to drive. And for 10, 15, 20 years after that, nothing really came along that really superseded it. The 4 litre is great, but it does feel very similar to my 992, potentially to the 911R downstairs. So I love it for a thing, but I think that 2.7 is just, is just the stuff. Anyway, I'm now going to have this, then sleep for about six hours before we continue our day. <laughs> 